Welcome, collectors and hobby enthusiasts. Thank you once again for joining me for another episode of Diecast Emporium. On the review table this afternoon is a brand new release by First Gear. It's the 150 scale Kenworth T880 day cab tractor with East Genesis N dump trailer. This version is the Viper Red Edition with an item number of 50-3455. Now we have seen the Kenworth T880 before by First Gear. That's not the new tooling. The new tooling is the trailer. I am really excited to take a look at it, show you guys all the features and details to it. You're going to want to stick around to the end because this trailer might just surprise you with some of the things that it can do. All right, before we get into the review, as we always do, let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, if you've ever had a First Gear product, it comes in the standard First Gear style of box, and that is the two-tone clear window package where you can clearly see the model inside before you even buy it if you're purchasing it from a shelf of a big brick-and-mortar store, for example. There is the First Gear logo front and center, 1-50 to 50 scale die-cast replica, and as is the case for 90% of the products that you see reviewed on my channel, these are adult die-cast scale model replicas. They are intended for the adult collector with the minimum age of 14 and up. Top of the box just once again reiterates that this is a 1-50 to 50 scale die-cast replica. Whole lot of nothing on the back. However, space is utilized appropriately on the bottom of the box where you'll see on the left-hand side the First Gear logo and all the information for their social sites. Over on the right-hand side is the product information and the copyright information for both Kenworth, Packcar, and East. All right. With housekeeping out of the way, what do you say we get this thing out of the box and take a closer look at it? So there are a couple other different color combinations that are available. Again, if you are interested in learning more about that, again, you can always utilize the internet search engine Google. It will help you out greatly there. So the model comes encased in these two plastic formers. You have to cut a total of six tapes, three on each side. Once you do that, pull the top off and you can take the model out. There's the trailer. Here's the tractor or the truck. Let's take a quick break. Very briefly, allow me to get all the packaging material off the table. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at both of these models. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. All right, welcome back. As you can see, we have the two models assembled, hooked up, whichever way you'd like to word it. First, we'll take a very brief look at the tractor. Again, to recap, this is the Kenworth T880 day cab. We have seen this before. One of the working features is an opening hood. As you can see, there are some detailed engine components that have been highlighted in a number of different colors. So that's pretty impressive to look at. Looks pretty good. Equally interesting is the fact that the front wheel or front axle has a great range of steering in both directions helped along because it is notched. And what I mean by notched is that it actually clicks in to a number of different angles. And once it clicks, it will stay in that direction so you can achieve a good steering angle without any worry of the axle flopping around. However, the doors do not open on this truck. Let's move around to the rear. Here is the fifth wheel. If this is the first first gear 150 scale truck you've ever seen, the fifth wheels are specifically designed, as you may have guessed, to accommodate first gear trailers only. And what I mean by that is if you have trailers from other manufacturers, such as Diecast Masters, they don't work with those trailers, unfortunately. But it does have a nice chrome headache rack and these coiled lines, such as your airlines, brake lines, lights, all that stuff, again, are just for aesthetic looks. They are not intended to plug in or work with the trailer like you may expect from a Sword or WSI truck. Over here, though, I do like this feature, and that's where all the different colored lines are kind of interwoven together, uh, and it does really give a realistic look there. I do enjoy that. Once again, another note I want to make on the fifth wheel is that it is stationary. It doesn't slide, again, like you would see on a Diecast Masters tractor. If you'd like to see what the chassis looks like on one of these trucks, there you go. It's a good look at the underside chassis. You'll notice immediately that the front tires are a little bit thicker than the tandems on the rear. 
but there's also some underside details such as your tanks, drive shaft, transmission, engine, and there's a good look at the notched steering mechanism. Okay, so we've seen the tractor. Let's move on to the East Genesis trailer. As you can see here, I'll get this out of the way right now. If you look at this axle, bring it a little bit closer to the camera, you can see here that it is missing the black cover. So I will be contacting First Gear to either obtain a replacement cap or maybe a replacement trailer. Obviously, the decision is up to them what they want to do. Sometimes this may happen. I'm sure if you guys have collected for any length of time, I'm sure you have uh, maybe encountered a model with a defect. It's not uncommon, especially on mass-produced product. That's no big deal, and I'm sure a solution to my satisfaction will be reached without a problem. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the trailer itself. It is a heavy and die-cast component. Very, in fact, very little plastic is actually on this trailer. As far as the decals go, here's the East Genesis logo up here. You have the East logo here. DOT striping is very, very nicely replicated throughout the entire length of the trailer. You have orange or orangish yellow running lights on it. And another light here. Working towards the rear of the trailer, once again, we have some warning labels here. Moving towards the rear. You have East here, Genesis here, some lights, and these mud flaps are rubber, but they're actually pretty heavy-duty rubber, so I would caution you against playing with them too much. Again, you don't want to potentially break anything. Here's the other side of the trailer, very similar to the left side. You have a hose up here, East, some warning labels, East again on the little tiny mud flaps. So that's pretty much it for the detail on the trailer. Let's turn our attention to the functionality. So as you may guess, the landing legs are in the upright position now for how you would connect it to the tractor if the two were, well, connected. So let's connect these two. As you can see, you just drop the kingpin of the trailer into the fifth wheel on the tractor. There's no push connection. It's literally you just drop it in and go. But if you wanted to pose the trailer parked by itself without the tractor, you can lower the landing legs by unscrewing them. So I will show you how to do that briefly. They do go down to a reasonable angle. Again, just make sure that they're about the right size on both sides. There you have it. One other feature that I want to show you, which is probably my favorite aspect about this entire model, this little chute back here. Now we've seen these molded in on trailers for years, but this is my first time seeing where it actually works. Check this out. How cool is that? So you lift up on the little lever and now the chute is open. How cool is that? And by lowering the lever again very carefully, now the chute is closed. To me, that's the coolest aspect of this casting. Okay, so how does the main trailer dump? Unfortunately, and this is an all too real aspect of journalism. Uh, it's limited to say the best, to say the least, I guess I should say. Um, the cylinder is a three stage cylinder, so fully exposed. That's it. That's all you get. If we hook it up to the truck to get the full effect, literally. Your dumping angle is that. So maybe that's enough to get some material out. And again, to open the tailgate, there's a little plastic notch here that you very carefully move to the left-hand side, and it can be a little bit difficult and fiddly. And then you swing the tailgate open to the right direction, and there you go. So I'll be honest with you, as a passionate collector myself, that's a bit disappointing. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Perhaps if this model is retooled or re-released somewhere down the line, the main improvement that I would suggest, obviously, is that the main dump cylinder be improved dramatically. 
so that we can see a very aggressive dump height that would more accurately represent what the East Genesis trailer can really do. So there you go, collectors. That is a review in 1 to 50 scale of the first gear Kenworth T880 day cab tractor. Like I said, has its pros, has its cons. Most models will have that. One main suggestion, as I just mentioned, I would have is to fix the lift cylinder. These models are priced between $120 and $130 US. One last thing I will show you. I'll bring the Diecast Masters Cat 980K to show you of a typical sized loader that would be used to load these trucks. It has no issue clearing the side. Here's a view from the other side. And the two make a pretty impressive display. But what matters is what you and the rest of the community thinks. Let me know what you think of this model and of the video down in the comments section below. I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great holiday, and I'll see you in the next review.